So next, what we're going to talk about is a story related to Rings of Power because the media just won't shut up about it. No, they will not. So the head of global television for Amazon Studios, Vernon, Vernon Sanders. Sanders, did an interview recently where he basically just came out and admitted that when it came to the development of Rings of Power, input from Lord of the Rings fans was more or less ignored and discarded. So he, here, well, there was here a specific the type of fan. <laughs> yeah, here's the quote as follows. We set up our own study with thousands of people, among them thousands of Lord of the Rings fans, to really have a conversation with them as each episode dropped to just understand how they were reacting. You we liked doing, it, right? You liked it, right? right? You have to like it. You liked it, right? What do you like about it? You like the diversity, right? Didn't you? You like the women, We have all your right? personal information, by the way. We liked, we liked <laughs> you like the woman, right? You like Galadriel the best. Sign the form right here. He continued, <laughs> we were doing as much of a 360 comprehensive look to really understand it. And I think we got a lot of those Lord of the Rings fans, both fans of the books and of the movies. Here is the kicker. We also know that there were some fans who had issues or didn't feel like this is what they were expecting or done in the way they expected. So most and that's natural. I think whenever you take on something that's so beloved, you're going to have probably a strong reaction for and have some people who just aren't on board. It's a vocal minority. So, yeah, they disliked it, but we didn't listen to them or change anything. We just kept going. It's not a big deal. Um, and this is no surprise. I found this video from back in February this year where they they posted this video of all these self-proclaimed Lord of the Rings, quote, super fans reacting to the teaser trailer that they released for Rings of Power. And it just so happened that these super fans were actually a bunch of social media influencers. That is and funny how that works, right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's also funny. It's like it's not just that they're they're social media influencer influencers. It's that they're social media influencers right now. Yes. Like that they're not like it's not some dude who just happened to be popular three years ago, but is also a big Lord of the Rings fan. You just happen to get lucky and find relevant social media influencers now. They just that closed their eyes and then yeah. like scrolled through TikTok and then picked three people at random. Basically, should we play one of the? Yeah, pieces. yeah. I don't know if we're going to get they, copyright on this. They but, you heavily know. focused on the importance of diversity and representation and barely talked about the story and the characters. How long so, is this first? Should we play this first one for? Um, uh, I'll, just, I'll just cut it off okay. when we need to. The teaser trailer and obviously there's a lot of stuff that you've probably read about it. We're introduced to the first black elf. Mm -hmm. We're introduced to the first uh, female dwarf. Now diversity, especially on screen as an actor, means a lot to me because growing up I hardly had that you know watching TV and watching that must be so stuff. hard for you never saw people of my color so it's exciting to see that you know diversity is being explored in the rings of power what are your thoughts on the casting decisions um, I'm very excited for it because Tolkien's work was always about being inclusive I mean we see it through <laughs> right of course it was of people from different backgrounds like it honestly wasn't that's not true to face a common enemy being Sauron or and just not not in the way they're talking about Okay, yeah, I'm let's just, let's yeah. move on to the next clip. Yeah. I, I, I've picked a few different points where they're just like talking about I'm waiting but for the just story. one person to be like, yeah, but the story. Yeah, like I waited <laughs> and I didn't I didn't find that part of the conversation. Uh, all right, here we go. Amazing. I also want to say representative because we're getting like more diversity within we the get series it. like diversity we're like elf we're seeing the first female dwarf and i'm very looking forward to like looking at that and then, looking at I it guess, like intriguing but what about the story yeah i'm gonna keep asking that question but what about the story it's it's obviously this period of history within the middle earth is very rife with notions of the plot of like the hobbit and the lord of the rings and seeing how the rings of power are being i dare him to, to mention one of the notions that he is talking about like i don't feel like any of these people are all that familiar with the source material What's and they were just invited because they have a lot of tiktok followers but here's the thing like like you talk to somebody like me who's not a huge Lord of the Rings fan. You should be able to win me over very easily. Yeah. You did not. And another thing is one of the influencers in this exact video admitted months later that she never actually watched the first season of Rings yes, of Power. I forgot about and that. she claimed that she was just going to binge watch it once the whole thing was out. But she was too busy keeping up with House of the Dragon. Ah! <laughs> 
at the same time. I'm just so, picturing like the House yeah. of the Dragon cast. Like, <laughs> great selection of super fans, Amazon. You did a great job. Um, I guess it's better. <laughs> it's better than her saying, "I tried three episodes and gave up." No, yeah. <laughs> and then the comments on this video were less. Than oh yeah, favorable. I felt like more than like I love that the quote. that, had that one. quote from Peter Jackson yep. saying, "We made a promise to ourselves at the beginning of the process that we weren't going to put any of our own politics, our own messages, and our own themes into these movies. Yep. What we were trying to do was analyze what was important to Tolkien and try to honor that. In a way, we're trying to make these films for him, not for ourselves. And as we know now, Peter Jackson was completely shut out of the early discussions yep. about Rings of Power, and it's no coincidence that it ended up being completely unfaithful to the source. I material. love that the quartering has his own, like the quartering's in one of the top comments. It says, there's zero chance this isn't an unmitigated disaster, and I couldn't be more excited. Yeah, <laughs> and, and look at that. The prediction came true. Another what, comment get, said, as a member of the LGBT community, I have to say, I don't think we need representation everywhere. Was Growing any... up, reading these books, I never once felt different or left out because there were no same-sex relationships featured. Seriously, how entitled do you have to be to need to have yourself represented in every movie? Well, that's what, like, my argument is always, like, if you don't want to do this, all you have to say is, like, look, those stories are great. That's not the story I'm telling here. Is that not, why is that a problem? Like yeah. they never, people always see ground because they feel guilted into, into allowing it into their story. When the, the best argument you could be making is like, look, like you guys are always talking about how you can't tell a story unless you've lived this, unless this is your lived world experience, your, your real life lived experience. You can't possibly understand the nuance of telling a story of someone from a POC community like, or someone from the elf. LGBTQIA community. Like you're not an elf. You're not a dwarf or a Harfoot. Yeah. Like, well, but I'm saying like the power you're going like, to represent them. Then? Th there's a way out of this for creators to not include it. But here's the thing. They shouldn't need to think about it. No. You should just write what feels natural to you. But it seemed like that was the, the selling point from the very beginning. Yeah. This is before the show was even out. Yep. And now I just stumbled upon this Twitter thread yesterday. And this time they were complaining about how the Lord of the Rings trilogy movies, and I mean the books that they're based on, lack sufficient representation for women. Uh, so here's what that tweet said. Uh, Rewatched the Lord of the Rings trilogy recently, and my kid casually says, This is the only scene where two women speak to each other in the whole trilogy. It, the exchange a little girl says to Eowyn, Where's mama? Eowyn shushes her, end scene. Ouch. It also never occurred to me that Arwen wasn't a part of the Council of Elrond, even though she literally tracked Strider's group down and outrode eight Nazgul riders to save Frodo. And I noticed in the rewatch that Legolas arrived at Rivendell with other elven women. They also weren't invited oh to my, the council. Oh my goodness. It's almost as if that wasn't how it was back then. Of course, that all male council meeting is where the fellowship is formed. They sent out for representatives from all over Middle Earth. Galadriel is a ring bearer. Didn't include her. The sexism of it all. The misogyny extends even to the Ents. Treebeard casually mentions that all the Ent wives were lost and he doesn't remember what they actually look like bruh and yes i still love the trilogy but some things are hard to unsee and then no, 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 no this tells <laughs> she, me i'm sorry no this tells me this tells me this is somebody whose mind has been infected with modern identity politics and it's actually making her life worse just for the record this isn't another case of someone lying about their precocious child saying something that a nine-year-old yeah. would never say <laughs> the kid her kid is 21 years old i so, also wonder why they said kid and not my son or daughter well i mean i think it's normal to call your adult children your kids still my kid but yeah, my gender it makes it sound like her eight-year-old was just like there's not enough representation for women in rings of power mommy yep um <laughs> so yeah it was just like a gen z per, like someone who's not my child to asked, lord of the rings at all galadriel doesn't pass the bechdel test and frankly it doesn't it, yeah that's what makes it so ironic that that one influencer in that teaser trailer video was like uh you know it's just really about uh giving that representation that Tolkien was all about. Like, Tolkien wasn't about representation, and he probably would, like, look at you like you are a mental patient if you started talking yeah. about it in front of him. I also have a great meme that Tacti Platt, I believe it was Tacti Platt he sent me here earlier. This is the fate that may be awaiting Henry Cavill. 
Oh no. Um, does it go the way of the boys or invincible or does it go the way of wheel of time or the rings of power? Only time. I don't think Henry Cavill will, will allow yes. his series to end up. It's funny. In that that fate Amazon Prime is actually a fascinating case study in like I think they just give the people that make their stuff the money and say F it no yeah if you search through their originals you're just like what is all of this shit and they're just kind of throwing shit at the wall until it sticks that's what I'm saying so like even if I was to go if we were to go by the genres that I like like if we're talking spy and military thrillers you go this way and you get Reacher and you get uh and you get um the Terminalist. You go this way, you get that horrible second season of Jack Ryan or that horrible Tom Clancy movie with Michael B. Jordan, uh, No Remorse. Like, you can get any genre and not really... Or you really, get Lizzo, watch out for the Or girls. you get Lizzo, yeah. Like I said, like, Amazon Prime There's is kind of There's also just some kind of, like, in-between realm that barely exists, like, where the peripheral ended up that's kind of just like... Like, they're trying. I which, tried to like it, but it kind of fell flat. It was just a little boring, just boring for me. It's like, it fell the same way as the show Travelers on Netflix went to me, which is like, it was so, like... The show Travelers on Netflix was so dour, and it was shot in this extremely claustrophobic way, meaning, like, very long lenses, very tight to the frame of the people to show, like, uh, tight shots of their eyes moving, tight shots of their facial features and stuff like this. And it's very claustrophobic, which can work if you break from it, and you break for at least a little bit of levity, or there's some color, but the whole show is drab and very, very mm. kind of hopeless, even though it was kind of an, like an interesting story. So it's like, it kind of felt that way. Like it's like, it never lets up. I made it through episode four of the peripheral and it never gets less depressing mm-hmm. feeling. So also I would add to this, like there's other stuff. Like if we were to talk about, what was the other thing that was like, uh, Le- Legend of Vox Machina, which I didn't think was that great, but a lot of people really like. That was the one based on the, the, the Critical Role YouTube channel. Um, like it's really hit or miss with them. So I I think that Henry Cavill knows better than to allow his show yeah. to fall into the same fate as a Rings of Power. It's just super chat. He hires he, just men. He knows how this this business works. And I think the one thing that could sabotage it is if he like broke up with his girlfriend who's producing it with him. That's the one thing that could maybe hamper it. But other than that, he he knows how this shit works and he has enough power in the project to make sure it's done right. And I was just watching The Witcher. I'm gonna at least watch the first season and see how it goes. I've heard that it degraded after that. Um, But I I watched this fight scene that he did with Renfri. Um, Any of you who have watched this fight scene, this sword fight, know that like it pales, like, like Rings of Power, any fight scene in Rings of Power, especially that god awful, scene where Galadriel was sword fighting those (laughs) amateurs that like pales in comparison to just this singular fight scene that was like maybe a couple of minutes long in The Witcher because they just they just do it right and it's it's so easy to just put in the time and the effort and the thought than whatever the f that was in Rings of Power I think the only good part of a fight scene in Rings of Power was when um Oh, when was that, like, part in that fight scene where... Ugh, I forget all of their names, there but, like... There was some decent stuff in the, one of in them, the second like, to last episode. One of them, like, broke a wrist against a wall. Oh, that was early. That, that was, was like, kind of cool. That was, like, episode... That was when uh, Halbrand broke that Halbrand, dude's wrist against, yeah, the, yeah. against the wall. That was in, like, episode two or three. That and was kind of like, cool. I can't believe he was the bad guy all along. Yeah. I, I, okay. And they... This, I'm being unfair. Those guys were being assholes to him. So they sure. they, they, they explained it away enough. So. But the, the executive was even boasting about how they so masterfully did that the, that plot twist where Halbrand is Sauron. Like, Ooh, no, actually, I, I made I made a comment when we did the review. I said, look, it was classic Hollywood the way they revealed it, where suddenly in the last episode they're lingering, the shots are lingering on him, and he looks menacing for no reason whatsoever, so even lame. though he's never looked menacing before. That's classic Hollywood projection of a scene, like they're telegraphing where it's going. I didn't have a problem with that. That felt very classic to me but like people knew that was coming like Mm -hmm. who everyone knew that so we will see where it where henry cavill goes with it but uh whatever i'm saying is like you can go one of two directions i recommend you go the way of the boys or invincible and you stay away from the rings of power because they have a long way to go with we'll review it when it comes out well plus like from now maybe we can get in on that like uh on that like next year survey where they're like did you like it 
Did you like the Rings of Power season two? I Who was your to favorite be character? In a consumer survey. And then you're like, well, my favorite character was Halbrand. Are you sure your favorite character was Halbrand? Are you sure it wasn't Durin or Disa or Galadriel? Like, and they just name like literally anyone but the straight white dude. <laughs> I guess Disa would be that. Yeah, like anyone but Halbrand can be the the good the character everyone likes. I think Halbrand and and Durin were the only. Yeah. No, uh, Elrond. Oh right? yeah, yeah, Elrond. Like, it's... Elrond was fruity. No, and uh, and uh, and uh, Bronwyn and uh, and uh, what's his name? No, he's the the elf. Yeah. Um... Oh, he's yeah. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. What was never... his name again? Uh, Aaron Deer. Aaron Deer. Yep. Yeah. He he's not white. So. Uh, but dude, like, look. The funny thing is, is I saw something. I watched a clip of that act. That, that actor's actually not bad. Like, it's just like they weren't given good material like yeah. i felt like it you feel bad for a bunch of actors who are being used as political pawns and not even giving getting good material to work with while being used as political pawns on one hand you can't feel too bad for them because they're cashing the check they're making the money good for you make your bag king get your bag. queen um but it is what it is thanks for watching this clip guys if you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media links are in the description below bye, bye.